Hey rockers, man, thanks for coming back for yet another rock and roll tale. Tonight I'm gonna go back to the year 2003 because I've got a little tale about hanging out backstage at Ozfest and interviewing Zach Wilde on his bus, and that was a very interesting time indeed. I was working at WIHN Radio, which was known as 96.7 IROC, uh, in, uh, of course, Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. And uh, they sent myself and our, uh, our, uh, one of our um, head DJs on the station, Stone, he was on the afternoons on WIHN, they sent us down to Chicago, or should I say up to Chicago, uh, to interview Jack Black from Tenacious D and Zach Wilde from Black Label Society and Ozzy Osbourne. Well, what happened was, the day of the event, me and Stone, I believe, used his car, I think, to drive up to Chicago, which was about two and a half, maybe two hours north of where, where we were in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. And uh, I was excited, because I'd already met and hung out with Zach Wilde back in 1999, and that story is available on this channel. If you just go to the video section, you'll see a, a little story about Zach Wilde that's pretty cool. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, if you would, right now, and maybe like the video at the end if you like it, and leave a comment and share if you want. Uh, this was an interesting time, man. I, I went to the uh, show with my friend Stone. Again, he was the afternoon guy at IROC. Uh, in the afternoons, I was the night guy from 6 to midnight. We went to see Zach and, of course, interview him with Jack Black separately. August the 10th, 2002, uh, at uh, Chicago's twe uh, Tweeter Center. That's a weird word, the Tweeter Center. Uh, it's a little too close to too close to Tweaker Center for me, uh, but it's at Tinley Park, right? So me and Stone cruise up there. We're all excited. I'm getting baked on the way up, if you know what I mean. Smoking out and uh, getting ready to uh, interview Zach Wild. Well, we end up running late. Next thing you know, Stone says, "Man, we might not get to interview Jack Black because that was the first interview that was lined up." And I believe Stone was going to do that interview. Maybe both of us were. I don't remember. But uh, we got there, and we get to the part, uh, place where you park at Ozfest, get up to the main area where customer service is to figure out how to get connected with Jack Black from Tenacious D, and of course the actor, Jack Black. And uh, what happens is Stone makes a phone call, up oh, too late, he's already done his press. And we got there by just a few minutes too late. It was a nightmare because Stone was a big Tenacious D fan. And uh, I like Jack Black a lot. And so at the time, back in 2002, it would have been really cool to interview that guy or to even sit in on the interview. Well, then it was time to get uh, connected with Zach Wilde. But in between then, I had kind of brought some party favors that I don't really normally partake in. And, uh, you know, that was a long time ago. But even then, I wasn't really known for, you know, uh, partaking in this particular party favor, uh, which was real famous back in the 70s. And, you know, think of Studio 54 and the Stones, but not the Keith Richards choice, but, the you know, the, the main choice that people did back in those days and in the 80s, of course, uh, you know, that white stuff. But, you know, I thought, I'm going to go ahead and do some of that and party up at Ozfest. Well, I kind of overdid it, man. And uh, it's not something I'm proud of, but it happened. And uh, my program director, uh, whose name was John Norton, was expecting me to come back with a cool interview, uh, interviewing Zach Wild, uh, and to edit and put it on the radio show that I was doing, The Church of Rock, at, on iRock Radio, right? Well, I got high as a kite. I'm walking around with this stuff on a tinfoil, just kind of partying like a rock star. And Stone's like, man, Moody, you're, you're really ballsy. And I'm just uh, doing it up, man, like it's no big deal. And there was a lot of it. And I just was like, oh, man, what's wrong with me? And, but I got super buzzed. And then I ended up going to get beers. And beers at Ozfest were like 12 bucks a cup, man. Uh, back then, it was probably more like 8 bucks or something or 6 bucks, But it was expensive as hell. And I remember going through a lot of those beers. And I was doing my other thing. And I got to Zach Wilde's bus finally, right? And Zach Wilde is buzzing, man. He's drinking beer and partying like a Viking, you know, which he kind of is. Uh, he's got his big leather wristbands on, his big long beard, his long hair. He's got his sleeveless uh, Black Label Society vest on. After all, he's the president of the Black Label Society, which is 
kind of like a motorcycle club. They have different chapters instead of fan bases. Everywhere he goes, it's like the Minneapolis, Minnesota chapter of the Black Label Society or the Medford, Oregon chapter kind of thing. Pretty cool, really. But to some people, it's a little bit too much testosterone. But I got to say, man, I am a fan of Black Label Society and Zach Wilde. A killer guitar player. Great work with Ozzy. Great solo material. And uh, yeah, seen him live many times. So um, me and Stone get there. We get to the, uh, this is my second time uh, meeting Zach. So he did remember me from uh, 1999, which is pretty cool. Uh, by the way, OzFest was an annual music festival held between 1996 and two, uh, 2018. And uh, while we were there, we saw Kelly and Jack Osborne. Yep, they actually walked by us at one point backstage, and I said hello to them. And the Osbournes TV show was very popular, you have to understand. So we were kind of tripping to see uh, Kelly and Jack. That was cool. They were hanging out together. And uh, Big Dave was there. Big Dave, of course, the guy that lived with the Osbournes on that show. Uh, and Dave, Big Dave was actually on the bus with Zach Wilde when me and Stone were there when I did that interview. Uh, by the way, you can find that interview with Zach Wilde on my other YouTube channel. It's called The Church of Rock. It's all one word. The Church of Rock spelled together. You can uh, type in Derek Moody, Zach Wilde 2002 interview, and that'll pop up. I gotta warn you, it's X-rated. It's not edited. The one we ended up playing on the air later was super short, very edited, because guess what? I got so darn intoxicated, I forgot to not cuss. The whole thing is full of profanity. I'm just warning you ahead of time. Zach is going at it. I'm going at it. Zach's really out of control on the interview. He was <laughs> downright obscene, literally. I'm not making this up. When you see, hear that interview, you're going to trip, man. It's, it's pretty wild. He'll tell you the reason why he grew his beard out, and it has to do with his wife and particular body fluids. Uh, getting past that, um, <laughs> we started the interview, and uh, again, I started cussing. It's very apparent when you hear it that I'm high as a kite. It's, it's funny because I'm a big fan and I've done my homework. But at one point, I started flattering Zach too much. And I got really complimentary because I've seen uh, Ozzy with Randy Rhodes, you know, Jakey e. Lee, uh, Brad Gillis. Um, I've seen him with a, a lot of guitar players, including Zach Wilde. And I was giving him a big compliment. And at one point, it got overboard because he worships Randy Rhodes and they consider him like a god. And I said something along the lines of how great Zach was, you know. And he said, that sounds pretty gay to me, bro. And everyone laughed. And I, th I thought it was funny because I was a little too high and I was getting a little too weird. And uh, so after that, it was cool, though. And uh, there was a lot of funny moments during that interview, man. He said some crazy stuff like, you got to stay true to the brew. Because these are back in the days when Zach Wilde was a big drinker. And again, very Viking-like. And he still is Viking-like, minus the brew. Uh, from what I hear, he's doing very good being sober these days. And that's great. But uh, he was saying some pretty cool stuff on that interview, man. Uh, stay true to the brew. Uh, the interview is about 11 minutes and four seconds long. And the whole time there was a couple other like people that maybe the roadies that were hanging out in the bus and they were laughing. Uh, hell, it, it might've been band members and I didn't know it. So I'm sorry if it was, but big Dave was there and he actually talked to me on the interview. Uh, nothing much was revealed about the Osborne show because he had signed a non, uh, what do you call it? Disclosure uh, agreement. So he couldn't talk about anything private about Ozzy or about the family, uh, outside of the Osborne's TV show, which was kind of wild. Um, I, I gotta tell you something though, man. I tried to get Zach to talk about bands that he doesn't like because he's notorious for just being very honest about bands he hates. And the one band he really hates, at least he did then, is Fred Durst and Limp Biscuit. He absolutely hated them. And when you hear this interview, he would not talk about bands he didn't like, but he went right into talking about a band he didn't like, and that was Limp Biscuit. <laughs> and if I could only play that interview right now while I'm talking to you and react to it, you guys would like that. It's funny. It's like 11 minutes long, and it's very explicit. It's funny. It's completely, he's high, I'm high, drinking, partying, you know, it's pretty cool, man. You got to hear that interview. Um, some of the bands that played that day, by the way, the seething hate that Zach Wilde displayed towards Limp Bizkit and especially Fred Durst 
on that interview is definitely worth hearing. It's just funny. And I'm not trying to offend any of you Lip Biscuit fans. I'm just saying it is what it is. And Zach was pretty hilarious. Um, I'm going to let you know some of the bands that played OzFest that year, 2002. Uh, the second stage acts included Down, Hatebreed, Soil, Mashuga, Flaw, El Nino, Andrew W.K., who I did get to meet at OzFest, and uh, that was pretty cool, getting a picture with him. Uh, the Used, Otep, Chevelle, uh, Mushroom Head, and Seether. Those are the bands that played the second stage that year. And I got to tell you, too, man, while we were hanging out with Zach, we were kind of hanging outside of his bus talking, uh, be sometime before, during, or after the interview. But at some point, we're outside the bus just hanging out, and I'm seeing cool people walk around, rock stars, Jack and Kelly Osborne, a lot of crew people and pe people with VIP passes. Well, at one point they said, okay, Ozzy's coming through, clear the area. Well, there was a big rule for OzFest that when Ozzy came through, nobody, and I mean nobody, could be out there hanging out at all. No fans, no band members, no crew. Clear the way for the king. The Prince of Darkness is walking through. The crazy train's coming. Get the hell off the tracks. That's what happened, man. Zach said, we got to get on the bus, man. The king, the boss is coming through. So we got on the bus, shut the doors, and about 30 seconds later, it comes a bunch of people walking around Ozzy, and there he is walking right next to the bus, and we're all waving at him on the bus. You know, the tinted windows were kind of hard for him to see us, I think. But we were like, wow, there's Ozzy a foot away from us, you know, a few feet, and we can't even say hello to the, 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 the legend that he is. But it was hilarious to see how that works, man. He, he was like Elvis. It's like, Elvis! Elvis is entering the building. Get the hell out, unless you work here. And even then, get the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Zach was cool, man. Zach was hardcore. He was funny. And if you hear that interview at the Church of Rock, I think you'll agree that it, uh, yeah, we were both high as kites, but I was worse. And um, I was the guy that had to bring the tape back to my program director and go, I got buzzed. Uh, you sent me to hang out with a rock star. Sorry. Same thing happened with the uh, Super Joint Ritual Band. Woo! That story is also on this channel if you look at the videos. Um, the main stage that year at OzFest, Ozzy, of course, was headlining. Rob Zombie was playing. System of a Down. P.O.D. And one of the last gigs for the original Drowning Pool because they canceled the rest of their dates with OzFest just four days after this, I believe. Yep, on August 14th. And uh, because the lead singer, Dave Williams, died. And so the band that was known for, let the bodies hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor. Singer died, they had to cancel, but we got to see one of the very last shows they played. Uh, also, Adema was on the bill and Black Label Society featuring the great Zach Wild. I want to give you a quick rundown of some of the songs that Zach did that night. Stillborn, Demise of Sanity, Graveyard Disciples, Bleed for Me. 13 years of grief, and the one that I remember the most because, well, to be honest, I went on YouTube and typed in this date, and it's the only one I could find from that Ozfest, was Zach and Black Label Society doing a song called The Berserkers, which is a, about a particular breed of Vikings back in the day that were the extreme Vikings, and Vikings were already extreme, but these were the ones that liked to drink and fight. And they were just brutal, the Berserkers. If you find that song on YouTube under Black Label Society 2002, you'll find that from that uh, particular show I was at. And it was killer. Great song, super heavy. Robert Trujillo, of course, of Metallica fame, uh, who also was with Ozzy at this show at OzFest, was on bass. It was awesome, man. Um, I got to tell you something, too, man. For the Ozzy Osbourne set, I did a little research. Ozzy, of course, was on vocals. Zach Wild on guitar. Robert Trujillo was on bass, who joined Metallica one year later after this. And he's still with them. Uh, well, he was also originally uh, from like 89 on, I believe, in Suicidal Tendencies, Infectious Grooves, Robert Trujillo, one of the best bass players in uh, rock, metal, you know, definitely, punk, everything. Uh, they also had, uh, it's hard to read my own writing, uh, Mike Borden was on the drums. Mike Borden, of course, um, was with Faith No More, and that's uh, who he's most known for having played with. Um, John Sinclair on keyboards on this tour, he actually, uh, also Mike Borden 
uh, by the way, played in a band with Cliff Burton from Metallica, who died in a band called Easy Street. A little bit of trivia for you. Uh, John Sinclair on keyboards was actually uh, the keyboard player in Uriah Heep, but he was also in Savoy Brown, The Colt, and The Babies at different times. So that was pretty cool. And uh, again, um, and it was a really great lineup, man. Oh, and also, this is Spinal Tap. That's right. John Sinclair also has credits for this. This is Spinal Tap soundtrack, too. So great band. Ozzy Osbourne, of course, kicked some major ass performing at Ozfest that year. By the time he played, I was pretty crocked because I wasn't driving home. Stone was. And I'm sure he'll attest if he sees this video, if he leaves a comment in the comment section below that I was really out of control at that show. I got really lit. He got all lit up again. Never mind. But um, that set, I got the actual set list for Ozzy Osbourne that night. I Don't Know from Blizzard of Oz was the first song they played. War Pigs from Black Sabbath. They went into Believer from Diary of a Madman, which is one of my favorite Ozzy songs. Uh, then they did something from the Down to Earth album, which was the most recent album that was out uh, about a year before this Ozfest. It was released, uh, Down to Earth album. They did a song called That I Never Had. Then they went into Mr. Crowley from the first Ozzy solo album, of course. And then they got to uh, another song on Down to Earth called Gets Me Through. Then the classic Goodbye to Romance from Blizzard of Oz album. Suicide Solution, another absolute Ozzy classic. Then uh, Zach Wilde ripped into a killer solo. I do remember being very impressed because I'm a big Zach fan, and that does stick out in my head like a, well, not a sore thumb, a killer guitar thumb. Yeah, Zach Wilde rules, man, on guitar. I love that guy. Uh, after that, they did No More Tears, which was a big, big, big crowd favorite and a big, uh, you know, radio hit. And uh, a lot of people were singing along to that one, the title track to the same album, No More Tears. Iron Man was next, uh, with, of course, Black Sabbath staple that Ozzy sang originally. Uh, then they did I Don't Want to Change the World, again, from the uh, No More Tears album. Road to Nowhere was next. Then they did Crazy Train, one of the most popular Ozzy songs ever made from his first album, Blizzard of Oz. The band left the stage. We knew Ozzy was going to do some kind of killer encore, and uh, he did. He did three songs. The band came back out. It was absolutely wonderful to see him out rocking again because, you know, Ozzy's health and weird antics over the years. He's having up and down, up and down with vocals, with his physical health. But, yeah, he was doing good this year. Uh, the encore, three songs. They did Mama, I'm Coming Home. And, you know, Lemmy, Kill Mister from... Motorhead wrote the lyrics to that song, a very, very popular and big radio hit uh, song for Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, of course, Mama, I'm Coming Home. Then they did Bark at the Moon. Originally, Jakey e. Lee played guitar, but Zach crushed it. And that, of course, is the title track from the Bark at the Moon album, which I love. And I believe there's a story about me smoking out with Jakey e. Lee on this channel. If you look in the video section, go way down. There's a video about me actually partying with Jakey e. Lee. And then, of course, the band ended with Paranoid, another Black Sabbath classic, which Ozzy killed it, of course. He's uh, amazing. I'm making sure there's nothing in my notes that I'm going to look at and say, hey, you didn't mention this, you idiot. No, it's all good, man. Uh, you know, I was just thinking back today. It was fun to hang out at Ozfest with Zach Wild. It was really a unique experience to be on the bus and just chatting and drinking with those guys. Uh, we did some cutting up. If you hear that interview, it was a lot of kind of male humor, uh, but it's definitely X-rated. So those of you that are going, oh, I've got to hear it now, please do, man. And please subscribe to my other channel, The Church of Rock, if you would. That's all one word. And again, if you could subscribe to this channel, it would make my day. Yeah, I want to go live soon, so I'll be uh, announcing when that's going to happen. Everyone, keep rocking, stay safe, and thanks for supporting my YouTube channel. Cheers. Oh, long live Zach Wild and Ozzy Osbourne.